We're good to go. We yeah, are. Oh, no, no, I'm sure. Please. We're good. Thank you. <coughs> Red light come on when they're on. Should. Usually, yeah, should. Okay. Good afternoon. It is the Ordinance Committee meeting for Tuesday, August 16th, 2016. Um, we have present today Councillor Rowan, Councillor St. Clair, and myself, Councillor Katarina. Uh, Manager Hall and Tracy Cole is taking minutes. Um, do we have approval of minutes for June 21st, 2016? Move approval. Second. All in favor? That is unanimous. Um, at our last meeting, we had a good discussion about a proposed blasting ordinance. It was brought to our attention by um, a citizen who felt she had been affected by some recent blasting uh, in a construction area in town. Uh, and what we had done at the end of that meeting <coughs> was, in essence, to table until today. And we asked uh, Chief Thurlow and staff to go back and um, work up again, <laughs> the draft, um, taking into consideration comments that were made. Uh, Chief Fellow, do you mind addressing that? Certainly, and good afternoon, everyone. I did uh, go through and make some edits to the draft uh, in the red line format. I only made changes of those things where it seemed like there were a consensus. I know there were two or three items that you folks were going to debate uh, a little bit further at today's meeting. And uh, so some of that uh, was really based on the testimony that we heard at, at the last ordinance committee meeting. Okay. So in section four, we deleted um, subsection B. Um, we changed from specific to general blasting location in uh, the new B double I. Some other minor uh, wordsmithing uh, in section five under notifications. Uh, and that, I'm sorry to, it, but that there had to do with uh, g giving approximate times an estimated number of blasts based on uh, what the uh, professional who came from Maine Blasting told us. Am I remembering that correctly? Yes, it seemed they like they wanted there was to have it a little more flexible, but enough so that uh, citizens would know. Correct. Generally, okay. Uh, in section six, um, we, we had a discussion about production versus cushion blasts. And okay. if you remember, there was a uh, discussion about if you, if you don't do those smaller um, cushion or micro blasts, it would necessitate using a hammer uh, on the rock, which is mm -hmm. yeah. generally considered more obtrusive. Um, so we changed that language there, which seemed to be uh, of consensus. We did add the seismograph uh, information in uh, Section 7 that uh, Ms. Hill had brought up. And then we made a couple of uh, minor changes to the application permit based on uh, the industry's mm -hmm. recommendations in terms of the uh, uh, explosives permit inspection, so just to clarify that language. Um, okay, so I'm still unhappy with hours of detonation. Um, 7 a.m. Uh, blasting must, must occur during daily hours and no earlier than 7 a.m. or later than 7 p.m. No blasting is allowed on Sundays. Um, production bla blasting may not occur more frequently than 10 times per day. There's no daily limit for micro or cushion blasts. Um, the times and the Day. I, I, I had wanted to add Saturday. I'd asked you, both of you to, to think about that. And then also um, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I just kind of think that's a little excessive. Um, I, could, I would negotiate 8 to 6. I'd love to see 9 to 5, but I don't think I'm going to get that. But I'd love to see 8 to 6. Um, I think 7 a.m. in the morning for blasting is a little early. And I think blasting on a Saturday is asking a lot of our residents. Will, do you have any? 
Um, so I, I think I, I took uh, Council St. Clair's um, suggestion and I did actually a little research on, on the Googles um, and kind of found a couple other examples anywhere that I could find a blasting ordinance that defined a period of time, um, always specified Monday through Friday and excluded Portland. holidays. So um, yeah, Portland, but Harpswell, Woolwich, mm -hmm. Edgecombe, Agunquit, uh I don't think that's the right name of the town. I think I copied it wrong, but someplace in Michigan, mm -hmm. um, they always had uh, excluded Saturdays and they excluded holidays. So oh, I, I think okay. we should do that. And I think the times I, I could also um, go along with a suggestion to, to reduce that time period. Um, but I, I believe that that was um, when Chief Thurlow uh, was talking about, I think it, that was one of the things that he thought that we would debate, I, I yes. suspect, because we did yes. mention it last time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I did have a question for Chief Thurlow, though. Yeah, um, so the section where you said delete this section because it, it may not be known to the applicant, you're talking about just removing that whole license user information, I'm assuming? I'm sorry, on the permit application? Was yeah, on the, uh, where you, there's a note here to say delete the section may not be known at application. That's right. about license user information. That's the whole thing about the license number and the name. Yeah, and right. Yes, yeah. Okay. The, the point that they made was that a lot of these uh, permitted some time in advance, and they may not know who the licensed shooter is that particular day, but that's something that we would do as part of our site visit when they get ready to issue the permits. Yeah, so we and we verify that there was a licensed technician there. That if we had questions, know. we could, the applicant is still, we do know who's, who's applying and Absolutely. contact them if yeah. need be. A similar thing happens with the fireworks displays. You don't gotcha. know exactly who's going to shoot the show when they oh. permit it several weeks in advance. And then there were also a couple other things to, to cross out the pre-block meeting with the public safety schedule and the transportation of explosive permit received. And that was because that was the state handled that? Yeah, it, was, it wasn't clear in our original language. The state permits these trucks. And I think mm -hmm. what the, uh, Will was his name, wasn't it? What, yeah. what he was reading into our language was that the town of Scarborough was actually going to conduct an inspection of a vehicle that Correct. may not be here when they got the permit, and that wasn't our intent at all. The state's permitting them. We don't have any issue with that. Uh, so we're just going to take that right off from the permit. Um, do we need language that suggests, and maybe I'm missing it, but that suggests that, you know, that the, the transport has to be within a licensed and certified vehicle? We didn't bother duplicating that because it's all part it's of all federal regulations that, covered that they the have state. to comply with at the state level. Terrific. And state trumps us. State, state trumps us. <laughs> uh, anything else? Great, thank you. Before I no, I when on? when you're when you're finished, and then if you want, I'll put it into form of a motion, and okay. then you. Let, but I'll wait until you're ready for that. Okay. Uh, thank you for making these uh, changes, um, Chief Thurlow. Uh, I also looked at these daylight hours. Now I know that construction work very often begins at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would be willing to look at a time that's like eight, eight to six. Um, and I would also thank you for doing that research. Will I depend on you for the details? That's right. That's right. Uh, it, for the Monday through Friday uh, and excluding holidays, that that makes uh, perfect sense to me. As far as the other factors, um, you know, the, particularly the daily limit on micro and cushion blasts. That made sense to me when I heard from the professional on it, just because, you know, as he mentioned, if we can get that done, we don't right. have to do the hammering, we can get in and out of there faster, which I think would make citizens happier who are abutting these, these areas, um, is get in there, get your blasting done, and get out <laughs> so the thing can start building. So that's, that's where I'm going with this. So did you have an uh, amendment? I do. Wanted? I'd like to propose an amendment to the hours of detonation, changing it um, from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and changing it from 7 p.m. to 6 p.m. and also adding no blasting will be allowed on Saturdays, Sundays, or holidays. Any discussion? Uh, do, you want, do you need a second first? I do. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? I, I think the other reason to do that is if we become the town that allows Saturday blasting, I have a feeling we'll get Saturday blasting. Um, um, if I may, yes. we don't have a dog in the fight, and yes. just so you understand why we put the draft language together the way we did, yes. we were just trying to model the rest of the construction yes. right. schedules, because right. mm -hmm. blasting is no different than 
sledgehammering or all the other things that go on. So that's where we came up with the, okay. the times. Uh, I certainly don't have any issue one way or the other, but sometimes being consistent with other mm -hmm. ordinances that we've got makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. But and, yeah. I, and, and my take on sorry. No, that's great. I'm sorry. Um, my take on that is that at this point, my feeling is that uh, I have to um, answer to the public at this point. So um, while our construction ordinance may state that they can start at 7, um, we're not getting complaints on the construction ordinance. We're getting complaints on this blasting ordinance. And so right now, at least I can go back to the public and say, this is what I was able to accomplish and hopefully appease them and that they feel like they're being heard. Sure. So that's kind of where I'm coming from on that. No problem at all. So. Yeah, I think if I could add, I think that they're, yeah. they're I, I take your point, but I think there's a difference between like the, the percussive effect of the, mm -hmm. the blast versus yeah. a, a sledgehammer. I think it's it's a, a broader I, I would, yeah. radius. I, with that also. Um, I have nothing to add to this discussion. Um, we take a vote. Yep. On the amendment. All in favor? So amended. Any other uh, amendments or changes? I didn't see anything. Uh, and before we take a final vote on this, Ms. Hill, do you have anything that you wanted to add? I want to General Hill, 14 Maple. Um, just again, I want to say thank you and also for amending, because I had a strong concern about uh, permitting blasting on Saturday. Um, but also, again, one of the things that concerned me is when the fellow, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, from the industry came and he was describing it as just like milliseconds or whatever. With the blast, there is the, you know, you have, and so that, those few milliseconds actually ends up being like 15 minutes because also, I mean, your house is shaking. It's like, mm -hmm. so if you have little kids, if you have pets, like you have to get things in order. And so I did have concerns about 10 blasts a day because even that seemed excessive to me when you're talking about, because just remembering what it was like, I think they were doing maybe, maybe you know, was it more than five a day? I don't think it was more than five of the, you know, the really big ones where they had a sound. Is, it, is that something you would know how many they did? Yeah, okay, I don't, but, it, but even five was a lot, but I mean, they have to blast, I understand that, but so 10 seemed really excessive to me, so I just wanted to express my concern about that. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, procedure? <laughs> yeah, so we've, um, now we need to just vote on the, to send it to the council. Okay. So did we want to address that number or just? As amended. As amended. As amended. As amended. Yeah. As amended. As amended. Yep. All those in favor of sending to the council as amended? Okay. Second. I'm sorry, second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second. <laughs> and then um, the final vote. And then you call the final vote. Go ahead. Well, so I, I seconded it, it. You second the? The amended. Amended version. Correct. That will go to the council. Is all, everyone in favor of sending this as amended to the council? Yes. Yeah. I'm in favor. <laughs> I'm used to being the boss. You are the boss. <laughs> yeah, but not going to spell major <laughs> procedure. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Ms. Hell, I would remind you that this does have more process to go through. It goes through the council also. Okay. All right. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Next, we have Great. some Thank you. amendments. To the, I gotta find the right page here. <coughs> Traffic ordinances. Um, we have two. We have one on Orchard Street that I know I have uh, spoken to Mr. Pengler on the phone about previously, and also um, Black Point Road. Um, Mr. Pengler, do you wanna just tell us a yeah, little bit about? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Yep, they have the letter and the plan. Yep. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Great, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. As long as the chair has it. Yeah. You can give that to me and you know. I'll. Oh, wow. Is this one we can keep? Can we can keep this? I'm going to be referring to the notes that are. Okay. 
So, Mr. Fangler, I know you called me about this, so I forget in the fall or what, whatnot. And, uh, it was a while ago. It was a while ago. <laughs> it's been a process, but I, this was the short term. The long term was that we um, had a survey done by Steve Ross, and you'll see the information there. And it was revealed that the uh, church West Scarborough United Methodist Church owns three quarters of Orchard Street. Mm -hmm. And Steve Ross, in his notes, you'll see that he uh, could not find any evidence that the town ever got the right to use that road, but in the meantime, everybody's been driving down there. So, so they do have the right to use it. But uh, when it became an issue was when a no parking side I'm sorry, no parking sign went up on our property and I talked to Ron Owens about it and at the time um, we were advocating for, there was a light post on the corner of where Orchard Street takes a sharp left by the hardware store. We were advocating for moving the road over and Ron Owens uh, uh, talked to CMP about giving up some of their land because they actually own that piece uh, that's on the map. Mm -hmm. And uh, CMP wasn't willing to give that up because they didn't know how they were going to get their power down to Orchard, I mean Old Orchard. And uh, so for a while we just let it ride and then uh, Tom Hall became the manager and I brought it up with him and Tom said he needed a refresher. So we talked about it and eventually Jim Wendell became involved. And then in the meantime, CMP put up a new high tension line going down to Old Orchard so they don't need to um, upgrade the power line that's right by our property. Anyway, um, I tried to get the sign taken down because it's on our land and it's prohibiting us from parking on our own land. And so I went back to the town and, and ended up talking to Dan Bacon and he went out with me and we measured the width of the road and it's just under 30 feet wide. And if you are familiar with the Eastern Village or Dunstan Crossing, the roads are much narrower than that. So he was able to figure out that there's enough room for two drive lanes plus allowing us to park on our own land. And so what we requested was that the no parking on this side of the street be changed to no parking here to corner because people coming around the corner might not see the first car and we have a walkway in the front. Right. So we would, we're okay with the no parking there. We just don't want to lose our land. Uh, the town hasn't paid us anything. And uh, he thought that maybe he could talk public works into striping it and we would actually have a little bit more parking. It only becomes an issue when we have funerals or craft fairs or Christmas or Easter and, and uh, funerals are the big thing. Yeah. Um, but that would help us a little bit and we'd, we would gain three parking spaces on Orchard Street that should have been ours in the first place. And uh, if it's striped to show where the street is, yeah. uh, there's a, where our parking lot merges with Orchard Street, there's actually a very wide mm -hmm. space and the people going around the corner don't really go where we are and we could park a couple cars there as well. Okay. So that's the request is that the ordinance get changed and I wasn't aware of why the no parking was there until I finally talked to uh, Mike Shaw and he said oh there's an ordinance and that's mm -hmm. how I ended up talking to the chairwoman. Mm -hmm. Okay great. Any questions for Mr. Fangler? I, I had a, a question so I'm, I'm looking at the, the picture. Yeah. So you're saying that the no parking here to corner is 
Can I come over there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to answer for you. I answered for you. Sorry. I, oh. have that. I have a bad habit of that. But no parking here, according to you. You're referring to this? Space what do space. these bubbles represent? You're saying you could have you well, could have additional because, parking here and here. Because if somebody's coming around, this is a tight corner, mm -hmm. and if there was somebody parked there, they might. It just they tight. thought it was a good idea, and we didn't have any problem with it. So those bubbles are still no parking areas. Well, and I'm going to have the town engineer. Gotcha. Oh, you got another drum? Okay. <laughs> yeah, she has another drum. Oh, she laid this out, so she. Yeah, we're okay. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> this is her baby. This, this is, is her baby. baby. If you accept this, you're still acknowledging that this is our property. Correct. And. Uh, what I'm saying, but the bubble represents no no parking there. Right. There'd be parking and here I didn't to here. I know about this because the last plan I saw, I don't remember seeing that bubble, but. Gotcha. We our pin is actually right here. Near the street and runs straight. If you look on that right. other plan, it mm -hmm. runs over. I went down and saw seven it. feet yeah. from the stop sign is where uh, Steve Ross put in okay. a pin in the right. road. Right. Gotcha. Um, okay. I understand. That was my question. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pangler. You're welcome. <laughs> Just for, the back. Just for the record, yeah. Mr. Pangler, you're here as chair of the Board of Trustees? I'm, I'm chair of the Board of Trustees, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'll hold my comments until after. Yeah, let's hear the let's hear from the town of Oh, sorry. I'm going to move out of the way. Uh, I, I know this has a lot of history, so I don't know the history. What I was asked to do is to... Um, to go out and look at Orchard Street and to see if there was um, sufficient or any potential for on-street parking that could be safely done and laid out. And that was kind of the extent of my task. And that's where probably the figure you have in your packet, I don't know if it's the one he handed out or not, it's, it's in the agenda items, um, shows what I had laid out. And, and I actually did go out and field measurements and found that that is a pretty wide um, section of pavement through there. Um, the concern always for safe parking on street is looking at the intersection mm -hmm. and I know there has been comments in the past about obviously traveling fast on Route 1 and taking that right in um, and doing that safely whereas people are trying to park and that's why I wanted to mention out for you guys um, that 30 feet mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, a parking stall is the typical, I, it's actually a wider, the 10 by 20 that I'm shown. You can go a lot smaller than mm -hmm. that. You can go 18 by 8, things like that. So that's a pretty significant and roomy, I would say, parking stall that could easily be, be maneuvered. And then also, so you looking at Route 1 traffic could come out and you could have a car have ample room to stack while mm -hmm. someone is trying to park. And that's what I wanted to show there for you guys to see. Um, I don't know exactly what you guys were pointing out for the bubbles, but. Do you want this? Excuse me. I didn't think that Andy did this, but I didn't know. Oh, I think that that's what I have. The same yeah. one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the line work, though, would, would be looking at striping, and that's where you kind of have to do from Route 1, show that radius coming in, so you're directing mm -hmm. traffic away from that parking stall. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the first bubble that probably you're referring to coming in. And then if you look at it out there, it's a pretty wide open where their parking lot is in the rear, yeah. mm -hmm. and there's a lot of potential to really direct traffic better, I think, and it makes it very clear that that's their parking lot, and that's where the other areas are shown. It doesn't mean that you have to do substantial work. It could just be some some paint, yeah. really, or even I've seen it you, in other instances where you see, um, uh, like in a downtown area, that you can stripe it and put like a planter or something right. to kind of define that as, oh, this is an entrance, yeah. um, rather than just wide open so that's what that kind of shows. And um, I think it is a very good idea to have the no parking here to corner signs um, just to kind of specify that. Bless you. So then the, sorry, Go ahead. Me. Um, so the, the intent then of that, I guess for lack of a better word, the bubble, yeah. that kind of the, where that paint would go, because it looks like it would potentially accommodate a car, but you're saying that no, that should really del delimitate an, an entrance to the parking lot. Right. I think right. technically there's room for a car. It's just I'm looking at safety-wise and turning maneuvers. Um, that is an odd parking lot in the back, the way the angle spaces are, and I understand why, because you can get more spaces that way. But just 
especially on that sharp corner, I think there's just a lot going on there, and that would be how I would recommend it. And then you're still gaining the three spaces. Go ahead. Um, for, for me, personally, this area has always been a cluster. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always bothered me. I live in this area. I mean, I'm right near you, where you are, Mr. Frangler. I, I, this area has always drives me crazy for just for just because I don't know why. But I think this would actually be an improvement. What they're proposing, the the church is proposing, Mr. Frangler's proposing. Um, personally, I think any time a group of citizens, a residents, put this much effort into something, we should do anything we can to try to support this. Um, and I, I see absolutely no issues with it at all, and in fact think that it will actually make it um, better, safer, um, and more accessible for people. So I would fully support this change. Mm -hmm. Can I yeah, go ahead. So, and then from the town's investment perspective, we're really talking about some just the white paint and then are repainting the yellow lines as well? Is that part of the... Um, I, I showed that just to show um, really what I don't. That's just to show what the width. No well, to show about. what the lane widths would be, and I, I think that might improve things too as well. Um, sure. To show, and that's why it's solid going through that curve as well. Because if you think about it, that's not really a road. Like typically, you'd have the break and the the double yellow line for a roadway intersection. I think right. it should be clear that that's a parking lot right. mm -hmm. and not necessarily another road. I agree. Because pe people drive through there all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mess. I think it's a mess, personally. Uh, yeah. The, uh, I think the trash truck goes through there, too. Yeah. But, uh, but from our perspective, right or wrong, there's 50-odd houses that use this mm -hmm. right. as their Correct. primary access, but it's one of two to, Yes. don't quote me, but I'm guessing it's about 50 houses yes. off Carriage Way. Um, yes. So we just need to think of, from a safety point of view, making sure our cars can mm -hmm. negotiate the corner, can Plus come and go, as they always have, and do it safely. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. And I think this will all enhance that and make it a better, safer place and give it a little bit more organization mm -hmm. than what it has now. So what we're looking at then, just to, to make sure we're all on the same page here, is you would be adding three parking three parking spaces? Correct. Along that line that's delineated? Right, so that's yeah. along the church yeah, okay. frontage. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that either. Mr. Yeah. Hall, I have a question for you. Yes, please. Um, I know we've got this preliminary, what would be the next step? I mean, we want to see some language, right? As yeah, we have a traffic ordinance that, that yep. is what controls. And if you're interested, I, I have a copy of the parking sections. Mm -hmm. it, it's a fairly simple amendment. I didn't want to go to that lens until we had an opportunity to at least present the idea and get some feedback from you. So it would come back to you uh, with the technical ordinance change yep. to do what we've, okay. we've discussed. Could I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it, behind that church now, there are no designated stripes or parking, like actual parking spots, right? Am I correct? There are stripes? I'm sorry. My mistake. Oh, okay. Uh, my mistake. I'm sorry. I didn't realize there were. I didn't think there were. Okay. My, my concern was going to be, if we're going to move forward with this, let's make sure that, um, you know, if... I'm looking at it as a safety thing. Right. I wanted to make sure where's our guarantee to make sure that each party is following through with, right. you know, what we're all supposed to be doing. That's always a concern of mine. Yeah. Um, so but that answers my question. So and, sorry, Tom. And where those where you're talking about those areas that we're showing no parking, it mm -hmm. really is starting with their parking stalls. So it's not encroaching in what they have now. Right. It's adding those three, right. and that's where we're looking at, at that intersection right. is trying to keep that as safe as possible. Okay. Makes sense to me. No, just, well, the, just so I'm clear, so, the, so what we're proposing, painting on the street is the, the first arc off of Route 1 to Orchard Street, mm -hmm. and then we're not designating parking spots, so it's just then a parking area until you get to that next uh, kind of, and then we're going to paint that loop and then paint the other loop on the opposite side of the parking lot entrance. Right. I think in those three spaces, um, typically you would see like almost a hash mark, and that's where mm -hmm. you sh I show like a T. So you can kind of give people, so you don't you don't park oddly oh, and kind of yeah. and end up I with see. two spaces yeah. Yeah. Um, inadvertently. So um, those can be just a very 
short little lines, um, not designating the yeah. whole space. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's it's more of like a T out at the gu at the yeah. the travel lane. I understand. That makes sense to me because where they park in. Yeah. Uh, front end in behind. You don't want someone inadvertently no. doing that there. Right. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. You're right. Oh. Okay. Okay. I see no issue. Um, I'm looking to. Should we? I don't think we need a formal vote. Just um, formal what vote I'll bring back to you is the, the specific technical change okay. to the ordinance, and that's what uh, you'd vote on and pass on to council. Okay. The second item here may have bearing as well. Yes. Why I combine them is that okay. they could be part could two be separate part but same. part of the same amendment right. to the traffic ordinance. All right. Thank you both. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Vendor. And Mr. Hall, seeing as yes. Mr. Wolfert's not here. Yes, the, the second item came to us. We've been working with um, Greg Wolfert and the uh, Scarborough Beach folks for a while. A couple of years ago, you may recall, we assisted them by painting a crosswalk uh, across Black Point Road with the full knowledge that it really wasn't up to all the technical standards. It doesn't have safe pedestrian access to either side. But the fact is they have parking on the opposite side of Black Point Road and folks are crossing it. So we came down with a decision, basically, that it's better to have it than not. Mm -hmm. um, so from there, uh, Greg Wilford, who's the manager, also said, hey, is it possible to align your parking restrictions with my season? So there's consistency there. And it's a fairly nuanced change, but it's a change nonetheless. And let me get it out. Um, currently, the standard our ordinance reads for Prout's Neck is Black Point Road. Um, I thought while you were looking for that, I yeah, go ahead. Yeah. That um, the Crosswalk Review Committee actually did take this up as like a new application, and so we have accepted that. The town has um, accepted that crosswalk as um, being a appropriate for that location. It has, a, now that we have the, our crosswalk policy, there's a process. So we kind of did it after the fact, okay. but our review criteria goes with. Um, Basically, myself, town engineer, um, public works, the police department, we meet on crosswalk applications. So we've reviewed that, and um, I've put together a memo of that approval. So that um, has been done. Can I, just to <laughs> clarify, yeah. this crosswalk is directly across from where their road comes out, where their entrance comes out? I can't. I'm it is trying next to, to it. Where it is. It's not directly at it. It's, it's over, over to the over, right. Yeah, okay. right, and that's okay. where their parking lot got aligned. Visualize where it was. Okay. It's yep. Over a little bit. Okay. It's, Thank you. So, that's as regards easy. parking, the um, the current park restriction is from May 1 to September 15. Okay. And the season for Scarborough Beach is March 15 March. to November 15. So I I beg your pardon. It's it's about a month on either side. Uh, but it does create some questions and some irregularity just because they're not consistent. Any questions? Yeah, I, I had a question. Does the does the May first to September fifteenth align with other seasonal mm -hmm. parking restrictions in other areas it, of town? It does, but we control those other areas. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, mean. I mean, that's a fairly common seasonal definition, if yeah. you will, that we've adopted. Uh, Scarborough Beach is privately owned and managed under contract, um, and they choose to operate a longer season for whatever reason. That's their choice. And, and are they are they charging? Yes, yeah. they are. They are going to charge. Sorry, I didn't I didn't hear you. Sorry. Um, part of the problem he contends is that when there's cars parking on the side of the road lawfully and he has activity, you know, in his lot, mm -hmm. people coming and going, it creates some sight distance problems and such. I haven't heard it from others. Yeah, I, yeah, okay. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, geez, I'm gross. Um, I, 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 I'm like this, which, which seems silly on such a, such a minute, it seems like a minute issue, you know what I mean? But it's always those minute issues that seem to come back and slap us in the face when we make these changes. And, you know, anytime we make a change where there's a cost effect, we always, so we always hear about it. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's so early in the season, it, it, to me it almost seems crazy to charge people to go there, but it's not our control. Oh, yeah. So it's like, okay, we're going to give them, yes, we're going to give them permission. You've okayed it. You've said that it's okay. Not go, it, it, you know, just like, what are we, I mean, what are we going to say no to really in the, at the end of it? We could debate it for 25 minutes. There's a lot to actually talk about if we really wanted to get into it. There's, we have other policies that could come into play with this. Can, if you don't mind. No, please. You guys, um, I, I like to walk on Scarborough Beach in the winter. Yeah. I go there frequently in the winter. Um, they do charge if you walk in. Yeah. So, yeah, so what's the to me, my concern was when, I, when Tom first broached this with me was in Tompkins. Mm -hmm. You know, my first question was, well, hopefully I'll still be able to go free in the winter and park on the road because that's what that's a lot yeah. of people do that. Yeah. But, you know, when you, when you think about that, they're charging anyways to that point. And I'm, I'm going to defer to the town engineer here. Do you feel that there is a parking issue, a uh, site issue there, potentially? Are they going to pay anyway? Don't yeah, pay anyway? I do. To go yeah. in there, so. But do you pay a second time parking and admittance, uh, admission? No, no, no. I'm just saying if you take the street parking away, you're not really taking away access to the beach. Because you have to pay anyway. But is, it a, oh. but is it, do you yeah. get a discount if you don't park your car? If you no. Well, I like don't remember. I don't, I don't remember. I believe it's <laughs> the same. I think we did look at site distance. We looked at the installation of the crosswalk yeah. itself. Yeah. I, I think the... I guess I didn't look at it in terms of how far down you're talking about no parking and there is a, a curve farther away right. and where yeah, that right. plays in. I haven't looked at it closely enough to, to mm -hmm. kind of weigh in on that specifically. All I can say is at the entrance there's sight distance and that isn't an issue. Because so, um, I guess where I'm coming from this is, you know, and I and I don't want to speak for you, but I think do. you're coming from the beach access yes. point of view you from know the public, <laughs> and and I come from that in, in the same way also. But we sit up if you park on the road yeah. and go in on March 15th now, the Ides of March, no less. Yes. Yeah. You have to pay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now I don't know what the difference is in paying. Or I don't either. Um, Sounds like we need to get a little more information. Yeah. I wish yeah. Mr. Wolfert were here yeah. so I could ask it's those yeah. questions. It's one of those that Will's seems so easy. <laughs> I'm, I'm what do you think? Well, it's one of those ones that seems like a no-brainer that we're easily going to be able to deal with. But, you know, it's like we also thought, you know, putting a meter in at, not to bring it up, but putting a meter in at Higgins Beach and giving people a free hour, we still got nailed for that. You know what I mean? It's like any time we take away even five days from people of free... Parking. parking, we get something. So I just want to be very careful and not just pass this because it seems like, mm -hmm. oh, we should do it because it makes sense. Well, it might make sense in the books, and it may make sense in black and white, but does it make sense to our residents? And that's why I just want to be careful. I think we need more information myself before we can do anything further with this. So I, I did have a question. What, yeah. what's, what's the intent of the current Restriction from from May first to nine fifteen. Like what 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 is the intent of not allowing parking along Black Point Road during that time? I thought it was like room like removal. Uh, I don't know no. the specific no. reason. I could speculate. Historically, yeah. And I think it has during this beach. Yeah. To be honest with you, it's always been. Well, it always has. I shouldn't been. say always. But well, I would guess during the summer months when we're talking yeah. about that ban, yeah. is, is there's probably a lot more foot oh, traffic, yeah. and yeah. you're parking all the way down, and there's a lot of maneuvering. It's not like right. on the off season or like you're right. saying in April, right. where people might go right. occasionally right. to walk the beach. Right. Um, when you have that many families, and right. it just seems like a lot more okay. congestion and a lot of traffic too that goes down Black Point Road in that time of year. Yeah. So. You have increased well, volumes. We probably have a hundred ordinances that this is a pet peeve of mine, so I know Tom's smirking, but um, <laughs> um, that desperately need to be just yeah. overhauled. I mean, because they are so outdated and old. Mm -hmm. And your point is exactly why. 
like why is it like that we don't I couldn't give you I wish I had an answer and I mean I'm sure Tom wishes he had the exact answer for it but you could probably open our book and point to one and be like why is that there mm-hmm. well, I don't know you know because it was 30 years ago and it made sense you well, know that's when Mrs. Jordan exactly. owned the beach, which I right. happen to remember that's how so, old I am I think you could walk into the beach free right so. that's part of our problem <laughs> now though is that sometimes these things come up and they seem so easy but then when you really start to get into them, there's there's actually more to it than just... I suspect there was as much political uh, I agree. rationale as there was engineering I or totally safety. I totally 100% agree with that. Uh, yeah. I did have some further communications with Mr. Wolfert. Uh, I, I don't pass this out to, to yep. encourage you to speak tonight, but you'll look uh, at the bottom of that first page. I asked him a very pointed question. Uh, on July 6th. Oh, 6. you did ask. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I so said, yeah. Um, uh, where did I say that? <laughs> you did ask. In the parking, are you intending to change, uh, our fee is, is it for safety car purposes car or business car reasons? Not a car fee. So whether you park in the park or walk into the park. We didn't, and we didn't get it. On the road, we charge a per so person fee. Okay. Yeah, so it yeah, appears as so though it charges one fee to enter the per way down to the beach. So it's it's not double dipping in that right. regard. Right. So it's a per person fee. It has nothing to do with how you get to the beach. And then if you flip it, he the next day he responded further. No, I'm sorry, that was the second of the two. Yeah. yeah. I beg your pardon. Okay. That was the updated one. Maybe I was reading the wrong one. Uh, again, I wish Mr. Wilfert were here. So I can invite him to. Can I yeah, a, why don't can, we? Can I make a motion to table? Yes, absolutely. Well, before we do that, can yeah. I can I just ask a, a couple more questions? So on the map. He, he's made a suggestion about the area that he wants to limit the parking for for just that period of time. Mm-hmm. Where is that on, on the GIS map? Can I? Oh, Kayla. Yeah. Pretty much shows that Kayla Vale is at the very top. Uh, Kayla Vale is. Right here. This one is the one that's. Uh, no, one? that's Sprayway. This is Kayla This Vail, is Kayla. Oh, I think. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, oh, and the other, other one, one is. is no, it's not located. It's not. It's uh, 396, 396 Kayla Ferry Vail. Road. Which one's. This is Ferry Road. Road down yeah, here. I intended to capture. Uh, okay, gotcha. So this is Ferry Road at the yeah, bottom, yeah. and the very, very bottom is the one it's by one the 394. It's, it's either one of those two. I can't. Uh, okay. I think I it's think the top one. I think it's maybe this one. On I'm thinking about it. That. Well, I don't think that's the road. I think that's the property line designation. It is, but that's Kayla Vale. But that's property. still yeah. Oh, the Kayla right, Vale property. Still, I yeah. see. Cause that's that, not a road. That road right there. My wedding reception was from Kayla Vale. I see. To remember. No, you're right. Yeah. Um, that's and to me, that's a lot. That's a, that's a considerable distance. So I don't. I'm not comfortable moving forward with this at this time. Yeah, I, we need more info. Okay. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's a, a if it's a truly a line of sight thing. Maybe we're talking about. Yeah, I'm not, I think there's more to there's it. More, there is more to it. Okay. So um, I'd ask the chair if I could make a motion yes, to table um, item five, section B, Black Point Road, expand the no parking restriction. Not restrictions, I'm sorry, prescription. Um, table it to our next meeting, please. I'm I hear a second. I'll second that. All in favor. When is our next meeting? <laughs> uh, 15th, 16th, September 20th at 4 p.m. Oh, September 20th. Okay. All right, I will certainly m- invite Mr. Wilford. Yeah, please, because I you. would be... Thank his case. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Do we have a motion? Do we have anything else that needs to be discussed? So um, the only other thing that I uh, was wondering if we were going to discuss at some point in the future was just the fireworks. Or oh, thank a, you for bringing that up. I know we had a survey I've heard from several people about... I was actually just going to make a motion for that. Mr. Hall, could you address well, um, that? My last conversation with Chairman Donovan is that he, I think he intends to kind of make passing reference tomorrow night, just okay. the fact that we've been surveying for about two months now or seven yeah. weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, his last intention was to perhaps hold a, I'll call it a listening session, not a public hearing, because there's nothing uh, formal to, but just to hear, more, you know, give an op- another opportunity for folks to verbalize what their, their feelings are about the current regulations. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, th- I don't want to speak for him, but that's the last word I heard from him. Terrific. And then I don't think it's right yet for this group. Mm-hmm. Got it. But it, that would be the path for uh, so alternative. Yeah, it would come yeah. Absolutely. Um, and just on the on the poll, I'll speak to it tomorrow too, um, for the public's benefit. 
That was never intended to be scientific. It's not a survey. Right. It's really a poll. Uh, people are probably stuffed in the ballot box. <laughs> I mean, there's no restriction. You can oh, okay. respond multiple times. And we're able to actually see behind the scenes and get a sense of which ones, you know, when you see the same responses in quick succession within a minute, you get a sense that someone's probably doing that. Um, but nonetheless, I think it probably does give us a basic gauge of what people are thinking, and that's the only intent. Yeah. Um, so I think it's of some value. I wouldn't yeah. risk my life on it, but I think right. it's worth some value. Right. Yep. Set. Great. Terrific. I'm, okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Wow. We're all done. Thank you. You've been out. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> so don't forget, we...